Hello, everyone. We're thrilled today to have a very special guest on the What Moves Her podcast. Well, first of all, she's a friend of mine. Secondly, she's just such an accomplished leader of people in the industry. And third, it's the very first ERA broker owner that we've had on this podcast. Janice Miller, welcome and thank you for being here. Thank you, Sherry. I, I appreciate this so much. I can't wait. I know. We're going to have fun for the next 20 minutes, but what? let's... I do have some questions, then I know we're going to go off base, uh, because you and I always do. And, you know, I, I keep thinking about that time that we were in San Tropez together, right? Yes. The, which was wonderful. Yes. And, uh, but, you know, a lot happened before that. And of course, a lot has happened after that. So why don't we start with you telling everyone a little bit about yourself? How long have you been in real estate? Um, where did it all start? Yeah, you know, there's so much history. You and I, we we just have a lot of history, and that's I know. what we are. I know. Um, I started in real estate in 1980, and um, basically, I wanted a swimming pool. And I thought, well, if I could get in real estate, I could earn enough, enough money for a swimming pool. And instead, little did I know, my husband left me on Christmas Eve that year. And I'm like, I, I have a high school education and I started and stopped college how many times? And it was, I remember my dad saying, well, you have that real estate license. And it's like, oh yeah, that. Um, but in the long run, pushing forward, real estate is probably what saved my life. And I have made a fabulous career and I feel like I've helped so many people. So that's kind of the sh long and short of it. Well, you know, that is an incredible start, uh, you know, both good and bad memories. And I didn't know that piece about uh, your husband leaving you on Christmas Eve. So that's With probably... children. Oh, my gosh. But, you know, obviously it was a blessing in disguise, right? It, it absolutely was. In 1980, I made $5,600 that entire year. And that's why I really hated real estate and share it. Oh, I'll have to tell all the women out there. I did something that no one should ever do. I remarried the ex-husband. Oh, my God. Now, I didn't know that. So, yes. and obviously that didn't work the second time either, right? No. Um, I, I was a victim of abuse. I don't say victim. I actually was a survivor of abuse. And that's why I say real estate really saved my life. Because when I remarried him, then um, nothing changed. It was always the same. But once I got into real estate and started doing training and following the leader, then I saw I could make it on my own. And that's what I did. You know, sometimes it takes a situation like what you went through to really uh, show yourself that you have what it takes and you have those leadership capabilities. And I'm guessing that's what happened to you, Janice. It, it absolutely was. And I found a career that I loved. I loved helping people. Um, fast forward to 95, my broker died. And I had to, I was doing about 18 million at that time. Um, and I had to join someone else. So I thought I would just go with the local uh i i've been with our brand with era the entire time and i thought well i'll just join the local one well that broker came to me and told me he didn't want me and i'm like what you don't want me uh but he said i do you do things different you have billboards you have assistance and it's like yeah it works and he said we don't want that in our company so it was like Oh, what am I going to do now? Well, I called ERA, which I have so many friends there. And they're like, just buy a franchise. And I'm like, oh, then I have to, I have to manage people. So it, it worked. Um, it absolutely worked. We're at 180 agents and I think 35 staff have an insurance company, have a title company, um, have been uh, right now we're running number four in the nation with era 
So well, yeah, we've done too bad. I didn't know that. That yeah, congratulations. That is well, right now. amazing. <laughs> you are you're a rock star in the industry. And you know, when you and I started working together for well, we had um, at ERA together, I think, um, almost five years. And yep. I was just drawn to you immediately uh, because of your natural ability to to draw people in. And that's obviously a great leadership characteristic, but it's wonderful as a woman and as a person as well. And so is that what your agents feel? It must be. I believe, Sherry, I really believe it is because I really do care about them. I had I had an agent one time, you know how you walk through the office and you say, hey, how are you? And she said, you don't stop then to listen. You just keep on walking. So now I've tried to change that. And if you're going to ask, how are you? Be prepared to listen because all of us, and I'm not just saying women, everyone is dealing with something. And I feel like if I can help people, it just comes tenfold back to myself, the company. Uh, I try to train everyone. If you care about people, you'll be very successful. I, I agree. And, you know, that's a great leadership tip about actually stopping to listen and not just giving lip service to right. someone. Right. Right. Now. I remember uh, when you and I first started working together that you invited me to a sales meeting. Oh, and I've right. been to a lot of real estate sales meetings in my career. And actually, I started in real estate in the 1980s as well. But I've never been to a real estate sales meeting quite like yours. So, right. Sherry, <laughs> no in, early on in my uh, career when I was a stay-at-home mom, I started selling Tupperware. And if you've never been, then they probably don't do it anymore, but I bet they do. The Tupperware meetings were like, like a party. I mean, it's like, let's have fun. And I've taken that to our sales meeting. If your agents, if, if you're having fun, then you'll love what you do. If, if I, the people all the time ask me, when are you going to retire? And it's like, oh, why would I? I love what I do. But the morning I wake up and I don't, then I won't go. But the sales meetings are just comprised of fun. Get people involved. It's not about me telling them what to do or not to do. But they're not going to do it anyway. They're going to do it their way. But trying to have fun and education, just constantly educating, but in a soft way so they can sit it themselves. Exactly. Now, Give us three examples of how you have fun and and um, educate at the same time. So I, I know this, but you tell us. <laughs> uh, there's a book that you might want to get. It's everything I ever wanted to learn. I learned it from kindergarten. I, I don't know the exact title, but that will help you be a kid again. You know, at the beginning of our meetings, we may play musical chairs, but I'm in the middle with them. And we're getting everybody involved. We're having some fun. And and then the, you know, the next segment will be a little bit on training, which right now we're just so focused on the buyer agency. And, and we really kind of make fun of ourselves. Like yesterday, someone 2.30 called. They wanted to go see a house. And I'm like, yes. And about five minutes into the drive, it's like, oh, I've got to have that agreement. We, you know, it's just, and that's what I will tell them tomorrow. I'm just like you. And we have to we have to remember we have to keep training and training, uh, and then you go off to again something fun, something that uh, get yeah, we have microphones all around the room and it, it's open mic. We want them to join and tell give us your experiences because we all help each other. Exactly, and and that's what I found uh, in your company and with your agents is that everyone helps each other, and so. You know, you just brought up something very important, and that um, has to do with the changes that we're going through right now, the significant changes in our industry. But you and I have gone through change forever. So 9-11, what happened right. then? You know, that was horrific, but the real estate market took uh, quite well, a tumble. COVID, remember COVID, we thought we were just all going to melt and die. I mean, it was just, exactly. and, and it turned out to be one of the best years ever. 9-11 uh, brought our country together. 
So th- yep. th- there's always good with, with all the bad, but change is, change is inevitable. And if you can't embrace change, then this is a career for you. And, you know, there are many things that we can't control around change. And so we have to uh, determine how to live within change. I mean, another period of change was um, in 2008, the financial uh, crisis and meltdown. So, you know, there are four instances that you and I have been through together. And Un- and this change now, the changes to our industry, the changes to how we transact with both sellers and buyers, we'll get through it all. Do you have any tips that you can share for, you know, the agents and broker owners who might be listening today? Well, just embrace it and don't try to, don't try to reinvent the wheel. Listen to what NAR is saying. Listen to what your association in your state is saying. I, I find so many people are like, no, I'm not going to use that form because, and I'm like, why does our state association give us these tools if we're not going to use them? Will it change? Absolutely. A year from today, we will not look like, we won't look the same. And the other thing is, buyers and sellers have always had a choice. And and we try to, uh, when someone wants to talk about it, we say, you've always had a choice. Uh, they have a choice whether to work with me or somebody else. So, that's probably the biggest thing is just embrace the change learn don't wing it you can't wing this one you you have to be educated once you have that education then go out like i did yesterday i happen to make sure now i carry those forms i have them with me i have them in my computer and i'm always ready that's good um and you know you're always ready and so you're a selling broker as well so you run your company and you have clients. Tell us how that works. Well, Sherry, I learned very in the very beginning, I couldn't afford to have, uh, you know, it was just myself and my two assistants. But I was blessed with the most wonderful agents that joined us. Just drove their car up, one little girl popped her trunk open. She said, I'm here. And I'm like, oh, okay. And about three weeks later, she said, what's my commission rate? Then I learned, do what you do best. One time I tried to build a spec home. That is not what I do best. I do best belly to belly with people, talking to people. I have a marvelous staff. I have a wonderful general manager. I have uh, a, a manager that has taken our insurance company to the next level. I have staff that I, I'm proud to call my friends. They, they, if I don't have them, I can't do what I'm doing. I love to work with people. Now, yes, I have to oversee some of the daily activities, but I've always told them, if I die, just keep right on. Just plaster my face because you guys are the ones, those agents and managers, they're the ones doing the work. So, and I love to sell. Well, good. You have to do what you do best. And, you know, I'm actually doing some of my best work now, which is advising and working on this wonderful what moves her movement within anywhere and beyond. And so I'm loving each and every day. And, but I, I want to, you know, talk about something else that's hard to talk about. And you and I are both widows. And yeah. so I'm, um, you know, sad for both of us. However, we have to take everything that we've learned and carry on in our lives. And so what's important to you now? I know what your answer is going to be. Uh, it starts with a G, your grandchildren. Oh, yeah, grandchildren. Well, without them, uh, I'd probably just go on and join him. Uh, you don't, none, it's, I can't believe I'm tearing up even. In what, actually in two years time, I lost both my mom, my dad, my son, and then my husband. And no one could have prepared me for that. But I mean, I'm surrounded by so many great friends. It doesn't matter. You're still at home alone. And then, of course, I have the ones that are like, oh, well, you should date. And I'm like, I, that's the last thing that you even have on your mind. It, that's not That's not what I want to do. But my, uh, it's, I threw myself back into my work, which that both, both times when my son passed and then when my husband my husband would tell me, you get out there and go get them, because that's what he told me every day. 
He believed in me. He believed in me before I believed in me. Uh, he was the first one to say, buy a company. You can do it. I know you can. And I, I now have to do it. And the other thing, you know how we think husbands don't do anything? Let me tell you, they do a lot. I mean, now I take the trash out. I pay the bills. I'm doing all that stuff that I found out. Maybe and he I'm... cooked. He cooked all the time. Well, I'm not cooking all the time, but uh, be, just love your family first. Love God first, then your family, and then your work uh, career. And, you know, the work and career really becomes part of your family, too, in a in a strange way. But uh, I love what you just said. And uh, I feel and exactly the same family. way. The, uh, my, yes. my, a, my circle of work friends, that is my family as well. Same here. Uh, same now, here. Now, you know, when you're talking about dating, and I know we're really going sideways here for a moment, yeah. but... Uh, I just went on for the first time. I actually posted on LinkedIn about it uh, for dating sites after six years. Uh, and um, I'm like, no, uh, this it's just not working. So that's my advice to you today is uh, you know, don't, uh, you know, don't go there. I, I don't believe I ever will. I, my life is so fulfilled with those grandchildren, my children. I have gone to... Sunday afternoon dinners and have the family there. I, I wish I would have done that years ago, but you know, I didn't, but now I do. And I post that in the morning on Sunday and say, Hey, I'm making dinner. And we, we were jelly a lot more than we ever did. Um, so I, I, I'm thrilled with that. That's good. You know, that is, uh, you have to make your best life no matter what um, is thrown at you and what the circumstances are. And I know that that you're doing it. I'm doing my very best uh, to do it. What is one final piece of advice that you would give, you know, young women, young entrepreneurs starting out today? I have a saying that I've said for years, and it's, if you rest, you rust. So I, not to say I don't rest, but I feel like go out there and get it. Decide what you want. Use a T-chart. Put the things you love to do, the things you don't like to do. The things I don't like to do, I can hire those to be done. I'm going to do the things I like to do. And that is being with people, being with my family, and being with my real estate agents and staff and doing the best job I can to enrich their lives. Make their lives better and yours will be fulfilled. You know what? That is the best piece of advice that I've heard in a long time. And so we're going to end it there. But one thing that I do want to say to you is the last time we talked, I invited you to Palm Beach um, to have a girls weekend. So can we make that happen? We will make that happen. Right now I'm in the middle of soccer and band and we've just got so many. I have a senior in high school granddaughter. So I'm not going to miss one single thing that girl does. In fact, I told her, where are we going to college? You know, I never did get that degree. So I think it's time. Maybe I go with her to college. What do you think? Well, I think that that could be awesome. So I'm going to say to you, when you have some downtime, which I may not happen, you let me know and we'll get together. Janice, I just love you. You're a wonderful leader, inspirational woman. Thank you for being on today. Appreciate you. Thank you, Sherry. And the love is shared. Thank you.